Welcome back everybody, my name is Chris Olmi and today we're playing once again our save in Starters Order 6. So, as you know, this is the new season, we finished off last seasons in the last video. And uh, we retired a few people to the breeding barn, so let's jump into the breeding barn and see where we are. There's a few changes being made there, so this is where we're going to start today's video. You can see our male horses are a little bit old, the three stallions, but uh, they've proven to be good breeders. I believe that at least this season, Starboard Bone Retriever have enough potential to keep breeding from Hidden Recipe, though we are retiring from the game. Because now, at this age, you can see his potential has dipped below 80%. Um, so I think that affects how much potential his Colts and Phillies actually have. So for right now, I don't think that it's a good idea to keep breeding from Hidden Recipe. So this will be his last season. He has had Stealthy Lioness, which is a great horse. And then you can see a few of these horses... I just didn't make it. And then Hidden Cat, Little Hidden, pretty good horse recipe for Revenge Food Thought, Hidden Ticket, Saxet Hidden, um, Secret Police has come through, Lock Journal, of course it's our horse, and the Dagenham Fox, Hidden Beauties there as well. So really a decent amount. You can see a lot of horses as well this year. We've got some yearlings out of Hidden Recipe. And this will be his last year. We've actually set him up breeding already. Uh, it's a little bit younger on the side of the mares. See two four-year-old four fillies. They're breeding. Samaret and Regal Realm just aren't good enough. Um, they were just in there for numbers, really, and to see what would happen with them. I don't think they're good enough. And a slower, a muddy track, I don't like that going preference. Plus low distance and you know yeah it's best off that they are out of the breeding barn which would leave us with stealthy lioness and starboard princess which is a pretty good combination for me peaches as well as kitty kingdom who uh, started off the breeding barn with hidden recipe and starboard bow kitty kingdom also laid back is a great trait to have you can see Stealthy Lioness, Ghost Rider was pretty good. Royal Drive, not so good. And we got Star Cat this year with a Yearling. So, again, not a lot of potential, just over 80. But this will be her final season in the Breeding Barn. You can see Peaches is actually holding that potential quite high at the same age. And over here, Starboard Bow. I think has bred a little better as well but you can see he's just over 80 and um yeah i was very tempted to retire starboard bow as well retriever despite being 11 has 20 group one wins only just been uh breeding starting with us and as you can see still holds a bit of potential so really those older horses i had some tough decisions to make but I felt Hidden Recipe, Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Kingdom, they've done enough for us. So it's time to move on and uh, start getting that new generation through. So that's where we are in the breeding side of the game. Uh, looking at that as well with the current crop. I mean, the three-year-olds have a big season now. They've got to prove themselves ready to go in uh, in a couple of years' time. And Crimson Star... He won the Triple Crown, of course. Ended off the season on a sour note in that Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, not very happy there, but he is up to a mile three now, I believe. So, you know, he's finally hit his distance at the end of his three-year-old season. That was a little bit short. So, you know, we're looking at him in the next two to three years going in the breeding barn, depending how his racing career goes. And kind of taking over from the stallions that are in there but aging. I think, you know, this is the last season for Hidden Recipe. Their next season will probably be the end for Starboard Bow. That will leave us Receiver and Crimson Star will have to go in there at that point. Uh, and be a second stud in our breeding barn. 
he's actually the only horse that we are not racing or we haven't found a race for yet so everything else has been set up you can see here there are a lot of horses which just do not make it we got a ton of two-year-olds to get rid of the auction is in two days now these videos have run a little long in the past and intros like this catch-ups do eat into our available time quite a lot so what I'm going to do is I'll race the two-year-olds in this video. Starcat is up first in a maiden, Ninja Cat, Gamabo, uh, Endless Shadow, and Sweet Treats, who I like a lot, Sweet Treats, actually. I think there's some really nice horses here. Starcat could be good as well, but is... You can see... Oh. You can see over racing this horse. We are close already. So that is the Starboard Bow and Kitty Kingdom, which, um, yeah, I'm excited for. I'm excited to see how that one runs. And I think the other one was Sweet Treats. Yeah, Hidden Recipe and Peaches. So Sweet Treats and Star Cat are from the same four horses that got us Stealthy Lioness and Starboard Princess, which together earned, what's that, 23 and 3 quarter million that sorry 33 and three quarter million that is absolutely outstanding 34 group one wins between them and the same lineage that brought us those two gives us sweet treats and star cat which i'm excited to see how this all develops so let's jump into the races we've got five maidens to go over six furlongs we're going to test the distance and quality of each horse then in the next video we're going to be racing grand sahara lock journal and my personal Triple Crown favourite, Hidden Beauty. We're going to see how they develop over the season. We might hopefully have a race in the next video for Crimson Star as well at the start of February or some point in February. But I'm thinking if we do the two-year-olds in one set of videos and then the elder horses in another set of videos, that should break it up and keep the, the time down a little bit. So... Our first race of this video, of this season, 2021. It is, okay, we're joint favourite. We're overweight, that is something I did not check. That is something I really did not check. I might have to reload the save and just change the jockeys for the following races. Because, um having that horse there overweight that's a bad bad thing give me a moment we'll get back up to this point with only star cat running overweight because i can't change on the day itself okay guys we are back and as you can see what i did is reloaded the game i've pulled star cat out of that maiden and instead inserted into a race in the next day there's only a five furlong maiden so I thought, if Starcat's not going to be racing very often this season, and the three-year-old season's what's important, and I know she's got the breeding pedigree, I know, you know, the Sire and the Broodmare are absolute fantastic horses, then let's just push for a grade three out of the gate. This might be the only race she has this entire season. So we're going to try her in a grade three. Uh, we changed jockeys on all the other horses. So, that means we need to go to the next day. And instead, we're going to lead off with Ninja Girl. So, that's something you need to pay attention to. Your jockey and how much they weigh. Now, for these races, for the 8 dates, I've gone with Rosario. He is an 8-8 eight, eight jockey. So, that's 8 stone, 8 pounds. So, if that's how much the horse has to carry, then I like to get the jockey on that number if possible. So it's only for maidens that they're usually this low. Um, most races, they'll be up around nine, which means my regular jockey who weighs nine stone is perfectly fine. So we don't know too much about this field. It's like an unraced bunch of horses. So you can see us there on the inside nice and early away and uh five and a half furlongs coming down to five furlongs now as the horses 
all start to bunch together the field coalesces so yeah hopefully this will turn out decently well we, we're in good position to begin things with as we come to four furlongs parasail who ate all the pious uh scholarship wayward sailor honorable dylan silver tree the day went well federal exchange park lane diamond joe all catching up now to that main or some the back men catching up there santa catarina is falling off a little bit park lane's moving up bella palooza runaway love ninja girl now coming into the lead bypassing yankee bay and up with us is park lane as we roam this bend one and a half furlongs left and we enter the home straight and ninja girl here just starting to push on just starting to create a little bit of distance fighting for the line strength at the end and we're gonna win the maiden with a little bit over a length and that is that's what i expect and that's what i want to see so it looked fairly comfortable stayed on strongly i don't know if that means she can go a little further it might do a mile and a, uh, sorry a furlong and a quarter there in the distance so ninja girl we open up with a win a pretty good win she might not have had that if she was you know being raised over weight but that's 109 to start this off that is the benchmark for the two-year-olds now today is the auction so all these horses down here apart from ninja girl everyone below crimson star apart from ninja girl will be hopefully sold in these auctions and bring us down to nine horses so that's 21 that we should be selling but we do have a race today as well so let us get on with the race and there we go gamabo is first favorite here and not too much there's a couple of horses that are running a little uh a little agitated a little warm and that might just cool them off look at that look at that it's raining it's pouring so let's hope that that doesn't negatively affect our chances this doesn't look like great ground in the rain to be fair let's zoom in a little you can see now at five furlongs there's not too much uh not too many people making a move everyone's running where they are at the moment so bartok's blythe nautical approach and saratoga snacks at the back commissioner gamma bow is in there with some like a lady whispering angel and somebody academic in the picture diablo's bend there on his own number four well four in the running number 10 as it is coral list in third place airs hall in second and up front with two furlongs to go is proud accolade and nothing yet from gamma bow so just past a few horses 1.3 this is going to take a, a phenomenal late run if anything's going to happen up to fourth gamma bow down to fifth and this might be conditions based i or maybe i don't know the goings off the conditions weren't right i'm not sure why gamma bow didn't uh run there look ran green okay so that's a nothing race that is a nothing race considering we struggled for pace that was promising ran very green so there were moments there i felt that we could do well these are all the horses we are selling ashy's friend is a short order horse we're not interested in that and they've got low sales large build or large build number l3 so yeah we're just going to skip out the auction and let's see so hidden reality did not sell the reason we're selling is below 60 percent ability and below 80 percent potential so i know that this could be a very good horse and as a two-year-old if we reach that potential there's a chance the three-year-old be over 80 which is where most of my three-year-olds are and then as a four five-year-old it could be 90 six-year-old it could make it to 100 percent if it's got that in its breeding so you know it's not a bad horse decent finishing 
good going adaptability very nice distance adaptability as well that's a nice tool to have so really there's a lot to like about this horse but that potential bar that's kind of what i base things off to begin with and hidden reality just doesn't really have it so he'll go back in for the next round of auctions and we're just going to keep moving on we've got three more races to go in this video so let's get the first one out of the way here is endless shadow i should have shown you the horses a little bit remind me to do that but as you can see there 70 percent ability 85 percent potential hidden recipe enduring night and uh, a, a decent horse not too much to get excited about in terms of the bars but um yeah i'm hoping that this horse develops well over its two and three year old season and actually gives us something to work with over the next couple of years so this maiden is on dirt and it's at night it's not a big field it's only eight horses i believe so we see it. you can you can look there endless shadow on the outside making good running nice headway and just holding in that sort of front four estival at the back penny rise sweet brianna bring home the gold they're just trailing the front four Dihan is just falling off a little bit gypsum johnny and electric city about a length back from endless shadow here comes Dihan getting back up into position as we cross the three furlong marker so this is uh the first night race we've had in a while and i quite like the way it looks i do quite like night races it's a little feel of something fun to it we're past the two furlong mark this field is getting strung out a little bit Dihan, the only player in position right now and there goes Endless Shadow with a little kick, as Daihan did as well. And Daihan is being left behind now. Half a furlong to go. This is an easy storming win for Endless Shadow. And that is great to see. A horse that I'm not too fussed with to begin with opens up six lengths, winning its maiden that is absolutely fantastic let's go have a look 103 rated but you can see is already above 75 potential uh, 75 ability now so that was a very very nice run gamma boat ran green didn't run well but has almost fulfilled its potential i believe that was what 75 ability um 85 potential is almost at that i think that's 84 85 is at now and ninja girl again just over 75 after her first run and she's got just over 80 potential so those three have run really really well to begin with and gamma bow running green you know her potential's filled she ran green she didn't run well that gives us sweet treats as our next horse up and here we go sweet treats so this is one of the two that i really really like and since we've reordered the horses and put um, Starcat back, then we're going to get my favourite two horses in this back to back. And then the Shadow was actually my uh, my third favourite of the five. So we're getting all three back to back. Let's see what Sweet Treats can do. This is the horse I have big hopes for because this is a male horse, and I love having male horses come through good races and good breeders because i don't get many good racing males they do seem to be a lot of females well that's a good start there he's out early he's on the outside and uh not bad not bad start so five furlongs here to go racing down the back stretch let's get in a little bit there get a better view of how the horses are jostling and who's getting into position where at the back it's cash included NJ devil pack on that is place i want revenge lady biscayne bella's rebel and bench points steel lady now moving up past dolce piccata and phil dancer music in the house on the inside 
is in second place. Two furlongs left to run here. We're coming around the bend and onto the home stretch here with one and a half furlongs left to go. And there goes Sweet Treats kicking on, pushing away. And nobody's going to be able to catch this horse now unless he lets up a lot nobody's going to be on screen this is sweet treats in an easy maiden just like my other two-year-old colt in the shadow a nice easy calm win and that's four and a quarter so not as much as in the shadow but sweet treats with an excellent debut performance and uh, 105 rated let's go have a look at sweet treats look at that 86 He's already fulfilled his potential for this season with just a maiden. And uh, I, I like that. Decent amount of cruising burst as well. You know, decent amount of finish. Decent amount of distance adaptability. Which at one mile one, if he is going to be anything in the Triple Crown races, to get up to a mile four, he's going to need that distance adaptability. A little bit of surface adaptability, that isn't too much of an issue normally. Um, yeah, and good extra speed as well. So this horse is something with the breeding. You know, I respect the breeding. I respect the stats. And I love that a maiden has fulfilled his two-year-old potential. So have a quick look at Starcat. Barely making the grade, to be honest with you here. So that's 61%, probably. 61%, that's just one over where the ability needs to be. 86 potential um but great finish great extra speed a decent amount of cruising burst again i do like that uh, good consistency it's in the distance we don't need the distance adaptability too much for triple crown uh consideration the going surface adaptability again is a nice little nub there that you can get and yeah it's not gonna run very often but we are opening off here with a grade three race. And this is, this is kind of scary. So this is the grade, th this is just a normal grade three. It's not a feature race. And yeah, okay. Let's get into it then. Now, I have retained my regular jockey for this. Because two reasons. It's a grade three is the first thing. And I want a good jockey on it. Number two, he weighs nine stone. And that is the minimum weight in this race. So Starcat up there. I'm really hoping it is the best horse in this field. There's a bunch of unknowns. There's not much point in looking too much at it. But our final race of this video. To round off our five two-year-olds and their progress to date. It'll be Catan. Guisho, Forever Shining, Glorious, Glenastar 7, Mechis Queen, Selinda, and Starcat. So let's see, can Starcat get the job done? Oh, did Glorious refuse to start? I think Glorious did not come out there, did not come out of the stalls. So we're down a horse with a field of seven. Glenastar 7 at the back with Forever Shining and Selinda. Starcat leading the chasing pack. Mechas Queen up in third. Catan is in second. And Guisho there leading the way. So, interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a race. Like, a live race with one of my horses in. That the horse has refused to, to run. Unless it's been my horse. This is the first time I've seen somebody else's horse do it. Two furlongs back. There we are. We zoom out just to see where Starcat is. And look at this run. Look at this run up in a position for Starcat. Powering through. Look at this horse go. And is just not going to be stopped. Starcat is going to sprint within one furlong as well. It's going to keep pushing away. This is a lovely looking horse. That is a lovely run around the bend. And this grid three, guys, is not even close. Starcat there. Winning its first graded race in its debut. Draw clear, readily won. And that, 
That has made my day. So Starcat there up to 103 with a grade 3 win on its debut. You can see now that 61 is up more like 66. So we're getting closer now to that potential, uh, which is lovely to see. But yeah, that that's that's awesome. So Gamibo ran green. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, Ninja Girl though gets us off for the win. And the Shadow picks up another. Sweet Treats grabs a very, very nice sort of uh, win as well. So the two Colts running really well in their debuts. And then Starcat picking up a grade 3 because there wasn't too much else about. And um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Normally I wouldn't run a graded race as their first. I do like to test them with a Maiden. But I think everybody there, distance-wise, was okay. Um, I've got to find a race for Crimson Star. Um, but yeah, this is off to a great little start. If Crimson Star can get his form back in the next video, or over the next few videos, and become that, that great horse we all believe he probably can be, get back over 130, maybe 134, 136, up to 140s, then... I'll be very happy. The three-year-old class needs to develop with one eye on the Triple Crown for Hidden Beauty. The other two might have a shot in those races, but right now Hidden Beauty is the one that I'm personally pulling for. So yeah, guys, if, uh, if you have liked this video, then please do leave a comment, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll leave my Twitter in the description as well as all the mods and where to get the game. So you can comment to me on Twitter. I'm checking it fairly regularly, at least once a day. You know, even if I've got a busy day, at least once a day I'll check Twitter. So I'll be able to get back to you really quick. Let me know what you think of these horses. Which is my best two-year-old? Um, do you think Gamma Bow can actually become one of my best? You know... That, that running green is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a nothing race really for it. So when it runs true to form, we'll see how good that is. But Sweet Treats, I think, ran really well. Um, and the Shadow ran exceptionally well. And Starcan, of course, opening off with a grade three. So let me, let me know what you think of those horses. What you think about Crimson Star. Is it going to develop back into that number one horse? Or are we just going to have to cut our losses? Let me hear your predictions, guys. Uh, and predictions as well for Triple Crown. Is Hidden Beauty the real deal? Do you prefer one of the other three-year-olds? We'll take a closer look at all those in the next video. But leave a comment here. Like I say, shout me out on Twitter. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, guys, the next video from Rascalicious Farms. I've been Chris Army. You've been awesome. And you all take care now.